Hello. Hi. Yes. Uh, so I just finished editing this video and uh, <laughs> it has approximately like 120% more cursing than usual. I don't know. Like I just got like really heated like in this video, but like this is your warning. If you don't like cursing, this might not be the one for you. Enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of the bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you're new to my channel, or if you if you have or if you have not seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday I go through all the new makeup releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wish list. Wish lists, most likely, or if it's a total washout. So before we jump into the palette that was heard around the world, or palettes, I should say. I just have one update real quick, and that is from Wet n Wild. So Wet n Wild came out with these new limited edition 10 pan palettes for their Halloween collection, I believe it was. And I was looking everywhere for the other two, because I did pick up the first two, which was like the neutral one and like the black red one. I finally found the other two. <laughs> they were already on sale at Walgreens, and my Walgreens had a huge stock of them, which is kind of surprising. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to pick these up. I'm going to push my Wet n Wild palette review roundup video back a week or so just so I can actually test these two out and include them in that video. Because even though these are limited edition and they are for Halloween, they're still going to be around. They're going to be on sale like at my Walgreens because these are $4.99. I got these each for $2. So I still want to review them because they do come in this packaging like the rest of their really good 10 pan palettes. So I want to thoroughly test these out as well. So that video is probably going to get pushed back a week or so. But then you'll be able to see a full review of all four of those palettes along with the Pac-Man palette and then the two Rebel Rose quads that I was... That would... <laughs> I did a spotlight on petite palettes with the first one. If you're interested, I'll throw it up in the cards, but it, it did not end well. All right, so first and foremost, the Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson collab. So I'm really looking at these palettes. I want to look at them objectively. I did watch the two videos. Okay, you know, let me talk about the videos first and then I'll jump into the palettes. So there were two more episodes that came out from my last kind of review roundup of them until now and it was essentially them struggling with the packaging idea and then them releasing the palette essentially and overall i have to say i liked the insight into how they struggled with the packaging but the editing was getting to me like it was way too dramatic for them <laughs> it's just a packaging thing like at the end of the day you can settle for something Right? I know he didn't want to settle, but that seems like a very first world problem where you're like, oh my god, my biggest problem is that I don't know how I'm going to package my palette that's going to sell out. I can't think of anything. And like, ugh, I don't want to be too harsh here, but literally who cares? <laughs> like, no matter what you came out with, people were going to fucking, it's still going to sell out. It's still going to sell out. And like the fact that they carried this, like, the fact that they were framing this as if it wasn't gonna sell out as if like oh no how is this gonna go like no it's it's gonna sell out duh and i cannot wait to see because I, I can guarantee you they were filming the release day and that's gonna be the next episode i cannot wait to see how they deal with like the disaster that was their release day because the website was not ready for the traffic and like everyone like a bunch of people on twitter were pissed because like they waited in line online for like an hour and they still couldn't get things and they didn't have enough product like whew. so i cannot wait to see that episode but i just i found myself getting annoyed watching these two episodes because i'm like okay yeah it's packaging just like okay yeah I liked what they did in Photoshop and they kind of worked their own thing and they kind of sent it and they made it. But at the end of the day, like that episode could have been cut 20 minutes of them just working in Photoshop. Like in the previous episodes, the cuts between what was currently happening and like what they were flashing back to were interesting and they like made a story. But this time they, they literally just cut back in between scenes and times and things so many times I couldn't keep track of what was happening and it got really annoying. Uh, it did. I, I have to say, I did like the segments. They were, they did feel very shoehorned in because they were, but I did enjoy them with um, Morgan and her experiences because it did shed a light on like the other side of the influencer life in California and like how literally like 
easy and free it is for them to get work done, which kind of surprised me. I always thought like people, influencers, like they would get work done because there's pressure. Of course, there's pressure there. But I had no idea they had like doctors and people reaching out to them to give them like lip injections and like chin work for like free. And like, honestly, like if any of us were in that position and they're literally handing you like free things, would you would you have turned down a procedure for something you're really insecure about? Because I don't know if I would. I really don't. So I actually liked that. It was shoehorned in and it took away from the story, but I actually liked it and I liked seeing Morgan. Morgan, who was beautiful anyway, seeing her struggle with that. And I, I'd say, I, honestly, that could have been like its own kind of little episode. I would have appreciated that. But um, I really did appreciate that and seeing just, just a tiny glimpse into the backside of how like gross and cutthroat the influencer game is in California. So anyway, all of that said, the palettes. Quite honestly, ugh, I really didn't like the mini conspiracy. I'm going to say it. But it's because I really don't like purples. So the mini conspiracy has, also they repeated the most boring shade in both palettes. Don't understand why, but they did. It's the root beer shade. But the mini conspiracy has like a light pink, a blue a blue, a maroon, purple. Like, looking at that palette, it kind of reminds me of the Kylie purple palette a little bit. But I wasn't interested in that, like, at all. Not at all. Now, when it comes to the actual controversy palette, I'm looking at it, the top row is unforgettable. Like, I'm, yeah, okay, whatever. The bottom two rows, it's very, like, disjointed. But I can kind of see what they were going for. Quite honestly, I would really only be interested in like a few of the shades. Like take out the maroons and the pinks. T probably take out that red because I, I did get blood sugar. So I don't need that red. I'm really looking at like six shades in here. And I know Petty Page actually just put out a video where she like lip swatched all of the lipsticks. And then she swatched both palettes on her skin tone. And quite honestly, it, it was kind of a shit show. So um, check out that video if you haven't already. But yeah, I'm really not interested. Like, I'm not gonna lie. If I was still like a fan of Shane Dawson and Jeffrey after the series, I probably would have gotten the Conspiracy palette because it's gonna be a collector's item now. But looking at it as like shades I would actually use, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Also, uh, along that line, when I mentioned in my last video on this that, like, I was liking Shane less and less, it's, yeah, I'm still, like, liking Shane a lot less with each episode that comes out. Okay, so before I get into the rest of the trend mood new releases, I do want to say this popped up as soon as I opened up Instagram. Um, so Shop Miss A is actually coming out with their pink blender in a pack of six which I'm surprised they didn't do that sooner, but <laughs> if they come out with the same pack for their black blenders, I'm getting 10 of them. <laughs> I love that sponge. It's like stupid how much I like that sponge. And I've actually been sent like other sponges in PR recently and I've been testing them out and honestly, they're still not as good <laughs> as the $1 blender. So I'm dying to see them come out with this for that black teardrop sponge. Oh, you know, I don't even know if I talked about the Tati Pally. Was that Pally? <laughs> Whoops. The Tati palette. Was that even out my last video? I don't think so. So Tati Beauty came out with this kind of palette where they've got, basically, it's just like six shades in four different finishes, which I have to say, looking at this as the beginning of a brand, it makes sense. A neutral palette like this makes sense when you're just starting out with a, a new brand. The fact that everyone's kissing her ass and saying this is revolutionary, no, <laughs> because NYX has these palettes. Like literally NYX has like smaller ones where it has the same color and a couple of different finishes. I remember um, Andrea Matigliano was actually talking about these palettes and it was like on her favorites list and that's how I first saw those palettes. Um, so it's literally like kind of that same concept, but the fact that it's, it's like Tati coming out with it everyone's losing their mind and like I tried to watch a few review videos but it was like cringy how ass kissy they all were it's like uh, I don't know if I'm just not watching the right people it's definitely giving me a different eye about things but like if you like literally just 
touch your finger in a shadow and you're like oh my god this is so beautiful oh my god like i literally saw someone do that <laughs> that's not a review <laughs> oh my god you're literally just kissing ass because you like tati and you want to be shown in a video or something but whatever so while I'm going to say this makes sense for her brand for a beginning palette, I probably would have purchased this before all the Halo Beauty shit went down, but I'm not. No, I'm not going to support her. I'm not going to buy this. And be just be mindful of whoever is like falling over backwards to like immediately love this palette. I don't think I'm really going to mention these. I think I said I wasn't going to. The BH Cosmetics Mini Zodiac Palettes yeah this is the scorpio one and like it's the most interesting one that's come out so far but to be honest that's not saying anything it really isn't so this actually like is really calling to me and i don't know why like if i look at this like with my logic brain and not my makeup brain then like i I'd probably have most of these shades and i don't need it but like looking at it, i'm like oh i want it it's so pretty look at the shades this is apparently a CVS exclusive. This is an eyeshadow palette from Physicians Formula, and it's called the Rosé All Play Eyeshadow Bouquet. Oh, that's such a gorgeous name. Uh, and it's just, it literally, like, I could dupe this with the Modern Renaissance and maybe a few other single shadows, but looking at the shades, looking at the palette, looking at the way that they're stamped in, they're all little roses, like, ah, I actually really want this. <laughs> Which is a bit nuts because I did just pick up their huge butter collection box, which, hold on a second. So this is something I actually really wanted and I picked up online when they had a sale. So I got this for $23.99 plus shipping instead of the $40, I think it was. So this is their huge butter collection and like literally it's every butter product they've come out with. So like literally everything so i'm actually really glad i didn't pick up like their um other eyeshadow palettes because you literally get every one of those shades in here except for this palette this palette is different it's from their rose line and not from the butter line so maybe that's why i'm tempted for it but i also haven't fully tested out their butter eyeshadows the only products i know and have tested are the butter bronzers which i've actually panned a full one of those and the butter highlighters so i really need to do the blushes and the lip products and the eyeshadows so i really don't have a lot of experience with those i really want to do a full face with this because you can do a full face with that entire box so that video will be coming at some point but i'm st i still want this palette <laughs> dang Okay, so I didn't even talk about the like Sephora sale, which started for Rouge a couple days ago. If you guys want to see a live stream about kind of what I'm thinking and what I would recommend for that sale, let me know because I might be able to do a live stream maybe this upcoming Sunday or Friday. I could probably do another Friday live stream. So if you guys are interested in my thoughts on the Sephora sale and what I'm going to pick up, because I'm actually going to pick up a couple of things, let me know down below. Oh my god, so the mini Norvina palettes. Ugh. So everyone and their mothers already talked about how shit, sub <laughs> I'm going to say, how shit ABH is now, because they're just literally throwing releases out. Apparently the company isn't doing too well. Um, but like Norvina now announced that like it's going to be a, a subset of ABH. It's just going to be her. It's going to be Norvina. And... No, <laughs> they did not go about this well. They did. They just they literally did nothing right with these releases, with these palettes, really. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know at this point who's still an ABH fan, it, unless they're like kissing ass trying to get onto the PR list or like they're trying to be Norvina's friend. Like, like I used to follow Norvina on Twitter. I had to mute her because of all the BS PR stuff that kept happening. And like, I saw her and I would just like block kind of like when that happened and block the hashtag. But then like, I saw her tweeting recently that like, she's like, oh, I think I want to do another PR search. I'm like, hey, d done, <laughs> bye. Like, no. So that being said, like, I'm actually kind of glad I spent this year focusing on and panning an ABH palette because it's, what I'm trying to say is that I felt I followed the curve of like ABH, like they were at their height and now, so yeah, I, I really don't think I'm gonna 
I mean, it used to be my favorite brand once upon a time. And now, I mean, that's what everyone said. Like, that's what Hannah said from uh, Smoky Glow. She, everyone, and everyone feels the same way. Like, ABH used to be your favorite brand. They used to be, like, thoughtful and elite and just, like, awesome quality. And now, the shit. Okay, so I know it's going to be a bit shorter than usual, but I literally only have to... Ooh, excuse me. Okay, so I know it's gonna be a little bit shorter than usual, but I literally have like 10 minutes before I have to leave the house to get to work. So we're gonna do one more product. What in the motherfuck? <laughs> of course, this is the one. <laughs> Oof. All right, Morphe. They literally came out with a glitter version of the James Charles palette. Blah. This is so, I mean, not, it's not literally the exact palette, but who the hell needs this? Oh. oh, and it's $42. No, no, this is so stupid. Speaking of, this is a holiday release. I think either the next BWOW or the first one in December, I'm going to do one exclusively focused on holiday releases. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know down below. And also send me either on Twitter or Instagram, like the holiday releases you most want my opinion on or the ones you're most excited about. Because it is going to be a bit of time before I can collect all, you know, enough holiday release. I mean, it shouldn't take that much time. There's a lot of holiday releases. But <laughs> if I'm going to do a whole video on it, I want to get them all collected beforehand so I can just kind of go through them. So don't forget to let me know on Instagram or Twitter or down below what holiday releases you're most excited for. All right, so that's it. I have to run to work. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to check out my playlist of all of my B-Wows, that playlist will be up in the cards and down in the description box. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.